Hey guys, Bipolar Bobby here, and I just wanted to chat to you guys and let you know that I'm proud of you. I'm damn proud of every single person that is still here, and even the people that I know in my life that, you know, gave it all they, they had. I guess I just kind of had this moment where I guess, believe it or not, I don't normally think about the life that I've had and the things that have happened to me in a mo an emotional way my doctors keep telling me that what i do is i intellectualize things and i i reason things and i and i come up with an explanation and for me that explanation gives me comfort but they say it also allows me to detach myself from my emotions and the gravity of the things that have happened to me in my life. I mean, it was only the other day I was talking to my social worker. And this isn't the first time that, you know, something like this has happened. I mean, one of my really good friends reminded me the other day too, like, you've been through a lot, you know? <laughs> And I don't look at it like that. I just always looked at it like a mission. You know, everything that had happened was just what stood in my way of getting to where I wanted to go. And I had to overcome that. If I wanted to live my life, if I wanted to enjoy my life, if I wanted to have a life then I had to look at the things that happened in my life and find a way to deal with them, find a way to treat them and find a way to get over them. And I guess in doing that lately, I've really realized that I haven't allowed myself to come to terms with my life. And I guess because I have been, you know, relatively good lately, you know, you just try and focus on that. But there's always this, this kind of part nagging at you, like, girl, you're allowed to break down. And I think I didn't really break down for so long because I couldn't. There was so much going on, life just kept beating me down and I had no choice but to get back up again. I had to weather the storm, you know? It, it was like being in the midst of a, a tornado. You can't just collapse on the floor. You have to deal with your shit. You have to just roll with the punches and, and keep on going. I guess I'm just taking a moment to allow myself to feel it, which my, my doctors keep encouraging me to do. And I know people accuse me of doing this. And honestly, I don't. And it really frustrates me when people tell me just simply because I share my story, you know, it's like I'm wallowing my own self-pity you know what, I don't do that. Just because I describe what I'm battling doesn't mean that I'm not trying to overcome it. In fact, like, describing it But I guess now that there's like, the immediate danger is kind of out of the way I've got the time to kind of just 
look back and be like, what a fucking ride. I guess I always thought that my problems really started too, you know, when I when I went to law school and, and after my best friend's mom died and, you know, all of this stuff happened, I just lost friend after friend and... But it was going on so much, so much before then. And when I look back, I just think, oh my god, like, how the hell? How did I survive that? I, I, I'm 25 years old and I honestly never thought that I would get, that I would live this long. I never planned, I just, I lived every day for so long. In excruciating pain and agony and depression. It was so painful to be alive. <laughs> and I literally couldn't think about anything else other than how I was going to get through each second of every day. And I am glad that I don't feel like that anymore. And I know I still have a long way to go. And I try not to focus on the things that my mind wants me to focus on and that is you are like 10 years behind everyone else. That you are unemployed, that you don't have a degree, that you're, you have no money, you know, you have to stay living at home with your parents because you can't afford to live anywhere else. I don't, I, I, I can't think about that because that is not helpful. And all I've really done to block those thoughts out is think about where I want to go and focus on, on getting there. Because I honestly believe that you are what you think. Whether you believe in the law of attraction or not, you know, I, or a spiritual being, I believe that what you think about will happen purely because subconsciously you will make choices that will drive you into that direction. I know the power of my mind and mastering it is hard. I mean, first of all, you need to dedicate a shit ton of your time to figure out what is going on. You need to educate yourself. Like every second of every day, you need to be learning. You need to be challenging yourself. And once you get to a stage like I am where you have the know-how. I mean, I used to think that like figuring it out was the hardest bit, but actually implementing it is so much harder. And accepting that you will not just suddenly be cured it's recovery to me is about finding myself finding naked barbie without manic barbie and depressed barbie and figuring out who i am with and without mental illness because i am always going to be bipolar there are aspects of my illness that i will always be battling and it took me the first five years of my life to really get to a stage where I figured out, like, what was going on. 
And then ever since then, it's been about, okay, now I know what's going on. Now how do I fix it? I don't know. I just want you guys to know that. I don't know what I want you to know. You are not alone. And I'm going to try and share more and more of my journey. As long as you guys want to hear it and, and want to be a part of it. If you keep liking my stuff and keep content, con uh, blah, blah, keep commenting and engaging with it, then I will keep speaking. Because for so long, no one listened to me. And that's not, that's not what worries me. What worries me is that no one listens to anyone about this stuff. That makes me really sad. It doesn't break my heart that I have gone through what I've been through. What breaks my heart is that there are other people out there who have had to go through similar things who are still going through it because I know I empathize with you. I know what that feels like and it is so terrible. And they tell you that one day it'll be okay, and you know what? One day, if you work hard enough, it, you will feel okay. And it'll be, you know, you'll have this period, like a little holiday, where you'll kind of just be so wrapped up in the fact that, you know, you're not being strangled, that you can breathe again. The, you kind of just don't even remember what it was like. Until it hits you in a moment like right now. And you realize that you never. You never allowed yourself. To feel it. To endure it. You spend so much time focusing on getting rid of it. And trying to forget it. But I think you need to embrace it. God, I can't even hold this camera straight. I'm like shaking, but. Oh, well, guys. I wish I had people closer to me in my life that understood. I've been really just feeling like a hug lately. Just no questions asked, just someone to hold me in. Just let me be vulnerable for the first time because I've tried to be so strong for so long I think under the surface there's a part of me that just needs to just time to deal with the past now that it is in the past This is just the most stupidest rant. I feel so ridiculous for it. Anyway. If you guys are still watching. Hey. I'm going to go have a cigarette. And just imagine what it would be like to be curled up crying on the floor. Because I know that after this I'm going to blow my nose. I'm going to wipe my eyes. I'm going to take some deep breaths. And I'm going to suck it up because that is what I've always done. Well, 
I hope you guys are having a better night than me.